When the Germans or Japanese want to turn one of their standard vehicles into a performance vehicle, they tend to do a lot of things. Like shed weight by using aluminium or carbon fiber. Squeeze the most power they can from the engine by maybe adding some bigger turbos. And add fancy electronic systems like torque vectoring for better handling. But the Americans have been doing it for a long time a little bit differently. And to show you what we mean, we've got with us the Dodge Challenger. SRT Hellcat. Wide body. The Americans simply took the Challenger and shoved the huge 6.2 Hemi V8 under the hood. Then they slapped on a supercharger to make it produce 707 horsepower and 881 newton meters of torque, which we'll be experiencing and talking more about later in this review. <laughs> And to help this engine breathe, they fitted an air intake vent right here in the front headlights. And to help this huge engine cool down, we have three functional vents on the hood. So what makes the Challenger SRT Hellcat widebody different than your regular model? As its name suggests, the SRT Hellcat widebody is 9 centimeters wider than the standard car. These broad fender flares aren't here just for show. Underneath them sit a 305 section Pirelli Performance tires, as opposed to those skinny 275 tires you get on other versions. These chunky tires sit on 20-inch forged aluminium alloy wheels, behind which it hides red Brembo performance brake calipers. All of these additions add to the mean, muscular and retro appeal of the Challenger that reminds us of that first generation Challenger from 1970. And we love it. Speaking of retro, the Challenger Hellcat comes fitted with a retro-inspired matte black fuel filler dough that doesn't lock when you lock the car. In the back, you get the trunk-mounted spoiler, rectangular LED taillights, and dual exhausts. Now, although the Hellcat is a performance version of the Challenger, Dodge hasn't cut back on comfort or practicality. While usually other performance cars have uncomfortable hard bucket seats, the Challenger still gets these soft, sofa-like leather seats that make sure you're comfortable no matter how long you drive it. The entire dashboard is focused towards the driver with plenty of soft touch material and carbon fiber trim. It's also great to notice that your typical American car hard plastics are well hidden in the lower parts of the cabin. Adding to the Hellcat's practicality is an 8.4-inch Uconnect touchscreen that comes with built-in navigation, Bluetooth connectivity, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay. And being an SRT, this same system gets dedicated performance pages, which will come in really handy later in the review. Adding to that is a 7-inch digital display in the instrument cluster, which has a very special feature. Special feature? Well, it looks like any other information screen out there. Yes, except if you're like me and you like your instrument cluster on maximum brightness... Well, you just need to use that small dial right there besides the steering wheel, put it up all the way and you will get maximum brightness. What's the Correct. big deal? Correct. Except in the Challenger, every time you do that, you have to drive with all the interior lights on. <laughs> yeah, I can see them on. <laughs> well, driving like that at night might be a little bit difficult, unless you want to be really flashy about it. But put that aside, the Challenger still gets cruise control, blind spot monitoring, rear camera with sensors to help you park such a wide car. Here in the back, there's enough legroom and plenty of headroom so you can enjoy the Hellcat with your friends. And the best part is, you won't have to worry about them suffocating since there's rear AC vents and cup holders for some extra comfort too. You know what the best part is? It's coming up next. It's not the cup holders. Let me start driving this thing. Hellcat. 
Hellcat, Hellcat, Hellcat. 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8. We're talking about 707 horsepower and 881 Newton meters of torque. And let me say, there is no tires wide enough or traction control smart enough to manage all this power. Are you saying it's scary to drive? Well, what I'm saying is if you're one of those people who enjoys going around the racetrack and setting new lap records easily, this car, the Hellcat, isn't for you. <laughs> this car is meant for spinning and burning those rear tires and living life a quarter mile at a time. Make sure you win nearly every drag race you participate in. The Challenger Hellcat is fitted with some interesting tech. Like Line Lock, which locks the front wheels and let you spin the rear wheels to warm them up for better grip. It's also got Launch Control, which limits wheel spin and lets you accelerate at maximum force by holding the revs at a limit you've set. And after you've launched the car, you have shift lights coming in the instrument cluster to tell you when to shift in that perfect time using the pedal shifters behind the wheel. Pushing all of that 707 horsepower to the rear wheels is an 8-speed automatic transmission. And to help you bring this beast to a stop, we have Brembo performance brakes in the front and the back with vented slotted rotors. You know what I really like about the Challenger Hellcat? What? Is how customizable the drive modes are. What do you mean exactly? Although there's five drive modes, you can still customize them individually. Mm -hmm. Meaning you can have the engine, traction control and transmission in track mode, but the suspension in street mode. Speaking of suspension, the Challenger Hellcat comes fitted with a three mode Bilstein adaptive damping suspension. Which allows you to control how stiff it is, meaning you can set it up in street mode for everyday driving, or in track mode for when you want to do some racing. And in that mode, of course, it reduces the body roll of the car. I'm sure everyone watching this review by now is wondering how fast the Challenger Hellcat can do 0 to 100 kilometers per hour. That's why in the coming section, we'll be showing you how fast it accelerates from 0 to 100, 0 to 160, and also braking distances from 100 kilometers per hour. Let's go. that we've shown you all the numbers you want to see here's a number probably no one wants to see in his car that's right you saw that correctly our average fuel consumption is 22.4 liters for every 100 kilometers which is more than the maximum number on the gauge dodge dodge themselves <laughs> didn't even think this car can consume that much fuel <laughs> So what makes the Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat widebody different from its main rivals, the Chevy Camaro ZL1 and the Ford Mustang Shelby GT350? Well, in recent times, both the Mustang and the Camaro have been focusing their attention on handling and improving their performance around a racetrack. On the other hand, the Challenger isn't bothered by making it easier for you to set a new lap record. What's its main concern is, is giving you a big smile on your face with a pure American muscle car experience. And that very experience will set you back 339,900 dirhams in the UAE. Thanks for watching and see you soon.